Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part two of our video on gesture and figure drawing. First one covers gesture drawing. If you haven't watched that yet, stop, go back and watch that video. That's where I'm going to introduce this concept to you, and I'm going to talk to you about gesture drawing. Quick recap for those of you who are now on the right track. Gesture drawings are quick. They're roughly 30 seconds. If you're spending longer than that, then you're probably working or focusing on details too much. They are simplified. We can view gesture drawings as studies of um, the human body, of movements, of how things work together. Um, side note here, when I was doing my MFA work and I had this little bird, I had a whole page of just drawings of how this bird would character would move in different situations. And so those are gesture drawings of my bird character. And our goal with gesture drawing is to capture the essence of that pose or that figure. We're going to shift in this video to talking about figure drawing. Now in figure drawing, we're looking at really capturing more than just the, the essence or the simplified basics. Our figure drawings are those elaborate, um, really fully fleshed out, illusionistic drawings of the human body. So when we're drawing figure drawings, we're going to focus on capturing our contours. What do we mean when we say contours? Contours are like the lines that we see as we look at someone. So if you're looking at me here, you'd see the contours of my sweater. You'd see the contours of my beard and my face. I'm um, capturing the, the lines that we see. We're also looking at capturing our forms. What do I mean by forms? Forms, remember, are those three-dimensional things like spheres and cones and rectangular prisms and cubes. How does that affect us? Well, our three-dimensional human body exists in three dimensions, and so in order to make it look realistic, we need to flesh out and look at um, capturing those forms or rendering those forms in realistic ways. So I should be able to see, if you were looking at like my fist here, that there's that like roundedness, that three-dimensionalness to that form. So that's what we're talking about with forms. And the last one is tones. Now another way to think of tones, if you're coming straight from art one, is tones are really our values. So that's the light to dark, that's everything from like white to black. So as we're looking at drawing these figures and spending time drawing the human form, in our figure drawing, we are looking at capturing our contours, our forms, and our tones. So as you're working, um, each figure drawing that you do this week should take about an hour, maybe two hours. Um, I've got planned for this entire week to be about five hours worth of work for you. Um, but I want you really spending the time to be looking at either one of the reference pictures I posted for you or um, a family member who's a willing model for your figure drawings. But I want you to be looking at them and looking at them in, looking at that image or that person in real time and drawing from observation. So both gesture drawing and figure drawing are observational drawing skills. And those are gonna help you when we get to the point that I'm asking you to draw from your imagination. Because right now your imagination is like an untrained kid behind the wheel who doesn't know how cars work. So you want to really make sure that we are spending the time teaching our brain how to draw bodies before we go off and draw bodies from imagination. So figure drawing, a good figure drawing is going to take anywhere from, I mean, 30 minutes is like a quick one. I would struggle at re rendering a good figure drawing in 30 minutes. We're looking really at like the hour to two hour part here. And since I'm in here more or less by myself, I had to scrounge up a model for our figure drawing because we have to be looking at something and I want you to be able to see what I'm looking at. So I have my willing model right here. So many of you know Bones, who is on homecoming court with their nice sash, um, wearing a leather jacket that a student abandoned in my classroom sometime in the past. and. They are going to be our model for our figure drawing. So give me a second while I get them all situated here. Let's see if we can get any arms to cross. Oh, keep your sash on. 
There we go. Now, this is less than ideal because if we look, um, it looks like someone deflated Bones' arms, and you can't necessarily see Bones sitting on a stool, but Bones is sitting there. You can see their legs sticking out. So this is less than ideal, but it'll get us in the ballpark of where we need to be for our piece. Um, so when we're looking at figure drawing, I really like starting out with a loose gesture and then refining it and adding details on it. So I'm going to look at this. Look at it. I'm going to take a minute to just study the, um, the gesture of this pose. As I'm looking at it, I see it's a really like delicate S curve. In that Proco video that you watched, you learned about the CSI curves with gesture drawing. Those are the basic forms that we can reduce the body down. So I've got this S curve, and then I'm going to start by getting the head mapped out. So I'm going to map out the head, and notice that I'm doing this a lot bigger than I would for my gesture drawing. Now, Bones is really lost a lot of weight recently, so I'm going to be doing my best to capture the essence of that. I'm not going to do any more details on this head until I've got the rest of the body mapped out. And so I'm looking at kind of how this form is sitting in space and time, adding everything that I've learned so far all together, looking at the curve of the shoulders. The curve of the shoulders is really key to understand what's happening with the body. If my shoulders here were angled down like this, what's going to happen is my, my hips are going to open up and the, the shoulders and hips tend to work in connection with each other. So that gives us a really good understanding of how that body is going to exist, how that body is going to move. And then I can look at getting that gesture moving down and then in my proportions I'm going to have run out of space here, but I'm going to have that body continuing off the bottom of the page. So if you run out of space in your sketchbook at this point, I would actually like pause, readjust, that way you can fit the entire body on your page. Because we're going to really want to study every part of the body in kind of progression as we work through this form. You're going to get better by drawing. None of us start off amazing at drawing human forms. Even that one kid in class that looks like their work is awesome. I guarantee has worked on that for hours and hours. So bear with me, you're getting there. From here, I can look and start mapping out my forms. So forms are really where we want to start. And I've got kind of the, the form of the head there. I'm going to build in this rib cage that I would see underneath. And so I'm starting off really, really loose with my um, getting the, the basics down of this pose. So I've got the shoulder here. This arm is coming down. And you can see how already this figure is starting to take shape, take form. This arm is actually coming across, and I can see some of that coat hanging down. I've got some of the elbow right about in there. The hands are crossed, so I know that down here I'm going to have this other arm, which comes out from the body, and then cuts across. And so right now, with this, it looks like a sketchy little mess, right? We're going to keep working this. I'm going to come back in just a second. I'm going to post part three, which is going to be our second figure drawing. And I'm going to continue working on this form until I've got this figure looking how I want it, looking like I'm pleased with it.